Oh, now I should be brush it off. Yay! There it is. Yep, we're live. It's morning. I can't see you either, by the way. Oh, wait. Here we go. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Hello, people that are listening. Um, <laughs> if this is any indication of, whew, we started off with a pep cack. You might as well just put that yeah. number one. This you know, one day I'll 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 magically put uh, I'll magically put a pep cack counter? counter. I just I, I won't do it today. I just okay. I, I just won't do it today. Or so if someone could build one for us, I mean that's great. I mean I'm sure Eric will build it. I don't know who's gonna build it. Uh, no, no, it won't be, I, you know, I maybe I'll do it on the stream. I have no idea. Uh, it's already a Monday. We're already pebcacking. Hi, everyone. Uh, I, I could start the music, but we'll start it later because everybody's like, oh, let's do music or let's do not music. I don't, I don't know what's happening on a Monday. Not particularly coherent. Uh, so hi, I'm Rosemary. I do a lot of the pebcacks on, on Monday. Uh, and today we have Tracy with us. Hi, I'm uh, decidedly not Kareem. Uh, I'm Tracy. You probably know me from Terraform Dev.2 Provider Friday. That was an adventure. So I'm here on Monday morning. I've got coffee, tea, and water. So let's get it cracked. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, even if there's no one on and no one paying attention to us, hi, we're just uh, we're going to just hang around and work on stuff that we, we need to work on. Um, so you're welcome to work with us. If you'd like music turned on, just drop in the chat that you'd like music turned on. <laughs> and I'll, we'll try to give commentary on what we're working on today. Uh, but so Friday, we were working on pairing, uh, pairing together on Tracy's Terraform provider. I don't know if we want to go through that today. Our brain's kind of just like on a Friday. Yeah, I don't no. know. No. We can we can do what you were working on because I think I still need to process whatever the stuff was we learned on Friday. Yes, yes, and uh, your your hair looks great. Thanks. It keeps puffing out on the side. This is what you all call. Oh my God! I forgot to take my scarf off. We have a live stream uh, Monday morning uh, hairstyle. Thank you. I it's... mean, you know, I'm in a maroon Sherpa thingy, so sure. you know. <laughs> I got cold. I was like, I'm just, I'm just gonna wear a giant jacket, and oh, yeah, it looks ridiculous. But you know what? It's comfortable. So for those who who want one, I, I highly recommend getting a sherpa, maroon sherpa, oh, fluffy sweatshirt because it's so warm. All right. I guess I should say what what I've been working on. Yeah. Uh. So really, really, when I think it was October when Boundary and Waypoint were announced. Mm -hmm. um, I like to play around with stuff, right? Um, that's how I guess Tracy and myself get used to the workflows. Um, that's how we get used to stuff, uh, you know, as people who are using the tools, right? Because we're using the tools as much as everybody else is. Uh, so we we released these two new open source products, Waypoint and Boundary. And they're fully open source. They're very new. Uh, and I wanted to just check out what they were doing. So I went through this exercise of basically building a demo stack that I could just kick the tires and figure out what was going on with them. Uh, it is on AWS. Simultaneously, I was working on some just general stuff for HashiCorp Cloud Platform. And so I just decided why not squish, be ambitious and squish it all together. And uh, so I had this demo for four months. How do I how do I calculate numbers? Uh, October, November, December, January, yeah, February, March. Five months. Five months ish. Yeah. Okay. Five months, and I decided that I would use it to do a zero trust system. So, thanks to not being updated for about five months and you know using beta products. Things change. It didn't work anymore. So I, went, I know you're laughing, but it didn't work anymore. <laughs> Which I don't know if anybody has ever done that before with their stuff, where you like create something or in your, you know, where you're working on stuff in your organization, and then 
you just don't touch it for a while and you realize like natural entropy has sort of just stopped it from working. Um, which is why really I should have just run some tests and automate the tests for it. But of course I didn't do that because I didn't think to do that. And uh, so I had to fix it again. I fixed it for security field day. Um, if you're interested in the security field day demo end to end, you're welcome. It, the recordings are somewhere on security field day. Um, and you'll see it kind of like working, I guess that's what you would call it. It's in its working configuration, so you can actually view the system end to end, because I am not going to go through that today. It is, you're laughing, you're laughing. <laughs> no, that was a very me thing to say. Look, here's this thing, but I am not, absolutely not about to do that today. But here's a link, feel free to read. <laughs> do what you need to do. <laughs> I just am like, you know, it, look, I did it once and and it was a really, I mean, it worked out really well. Like it shows it step by step how you're building up a zero trust system, which by the way, there's only as close as you can get. I'm not saying that this system is zero trust by any means. So that's why I'm going back to it today with hopefully Tracy's help on fixing some of these parts because it's not fully secure, right? If we were talking about uh, fully secure, there were some practices that I probably got a little like, I was just sort of like, I need to get this vaguely working and then we'll go back and we'll, we'll right. get it more secure later. Uh, and that's the nature of delivery. You try to get it working without security and then you try to secure it, which some things were more secure than others, um, which was great. But one big piece that I could not figure out and I tried, this was horrifying. So I tried to do this the morning of security field day, oh, which no. was, I shouldn't have done this. You'd think I would have learned my lesson. I shouldn't have done this. Basically, I was glad I committed uh, and and froze commits, right? Uh, on I knew what was the last working commit, so that was good. Right. But I went and I tried to fix the security groups to narrow it all down, and of course it broke everything. So today, we are going to go back and try to fix the security groups again. <laughs> because oh I could not make heads or tails of what to do. Right. Yeah, it's great. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my browser view so that way everybody can see my diagram. Uh, so this is the diagram. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, is... oh, what? Um, no, mistakes were made. Okay, that's... sorry. We're gonna just zoom in. That seems like the easiest path, path of least resistance. I've only had one cup of coffee this morning, so we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. So this is the setup, right? I was using the boundary reference architecture. Um, I'll post that in the chat, but I was using the boundary reference architecture, which is over here. Uh, deployment, AWS, yeah. So I was like, I'll use this Zygambit. No, there was a bee in the window saying hi. Ah, no, I hate bees. No one. That is the one thing I am, that is my phobia. I don't like bees. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn remember the music. That. If anybody thinks it's too loud, just let me know. So <laughs> I can't hear it from my side. I can't tell. Anyway, so what happened was that I uh, was using this reference architecture for boundary mm -hmm. and I just sort of copy pasted it, which we all know about copy paste. You know, someone else did it, it works. And, and you're like, okay, I'll just borrow it. So I borrowed it and it worked and I didn't really think much about it. Um, but the, the thing that kind of just like, I had to figure out how to fix was that all of the boundary stuff was in a public subnet. Um, it was pretty much configured that the database would be in a public subnet, the controller would be in a public subnet and the worker would be in a public subnet. And if you're not as familiar with boundary, basically the architecture, and I'm not a boundary expert. So for those who, if someone is a boundary expert, please let me know, that, that's just not me. But uh, the sort of rough architecture of boundary itself is that you have a controller and that allows someone to authenticate to boundary and receive a token. Uh, they can then subsequently use that token to SSH or proxy into various endpoints in your private network or any other network should you desire using a worker. Uh, so a worker, I, I don't know if I'll get an, uh, I'm not, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or make this analogy, but to me, boundary worker was kind of like a bastion or like a jump box. 
close enough. Yeah. So anyway, I said, okay, let me just see what these security groups are really doing. I'm going to swap to VS Code. And again, if Tracy, if there's like bad font, just tell me that bad font exists. It is. I'll, I'll open it up and then you'll be able to see it. One second. Boundary deployment. Uh, EC2? I want to say it's EC2. It's small. It's small. No. I forgot you're using uh... OBS. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> it just needs to be a little bit bigger, though. What is going on with this thing? You know what? We're just going to do this. Oh, there we go. That was weird. Well, I'm just going to resize it because you know what? And then we're just going to have to be behind it. Go to the back. Uh, fixing overlays. OK. Oh, no, I didn't fix it. Pet, does this count as a pep cac? <laughs> I don't know. It can be a 0.5. It can it's be a, a half pep cac. It's a 0.5 pep cac. Pep cac. <laughs> 0.5 pep cac. Uh, I mean, it's uh, OBS. Like, you can't always give yourself a full point if OBS is involved at any point, given point in time. Yeah. Um, okay. All right, there we go. So this is the uh, reference architecture, which, you know, this is all just Terraform stuff that you use, that just creates the workers and the controllers and everything else. It's a lot. Oh, hello. Welcome. Yes, we are, we're doing boundary. So uh, welcome. I could use some help on uh, debugging my security groups for boundary because I thought my boundary security groups were right. Turns out they are not what I thought. Um, but we're actually gonna go through some of the guts of, of boundary too. Cause I think we're gonna need to debug some of boundary just to figure out why it's not working. Uh, and by the way, I, as a preface, I am not a boundary expert and neither is Tracy. So this is going to be uh, very interesting. Okay, so the controller and the worker, right? So, yeah, see, well, see, that's the thing. The, and this is what I'll show you in the reference architecture that I was looking at, and I borrowed this from. Do we all notice something very fascinating? <laughs> it's using zero, zero, zero. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm so, I don't know how to make this not use zero, zero, zero. Uh, it's not helping me. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you for joining. We love these streams too. So, uh, yes, we're we're very happy you're here. Um. <laughs> so, I was I was like, oh yeah, you know, this is a, a security project, right? It's about if you're not as familiar with Boundary, Boundary is about securing identity and access management. So I thought, oh, you know, I guess it makes kind of sense that you want to lock down the workers and the controllers. But it turns out that when I looked at this, it wasn't fully locked down, and I just really wasn't sure how to how to fix it. Um, so, as I mentioned before, I told Tracy I tried to do this the the morning of Security Field Day, and I could not get it working. Uh, but I did I did notice something very critical, where I did something that I I realized I couldn't fix it. Right. So this zero 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 I couldn't lock down to the controller. So the boundary controller, remember, is someone authenticating to the controller to do something. Well, first of all, in order for Terraform Cloud, which is what I was doing to set it up, uh, in order for Terraform Cloud to configure boundary in the first place, it needs SSH 22, port 22. And we don't have pinned IP ranges for Terraform Cloud. Yeah. That that might be a small bit of a yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a moment and there's nothing wrong <laughs> with that right like if you're using SaaS product right you sometimes you're just you don't have the pinned IP ranges and that's right. that's fine so then I was like okay I can't narrow it down further because I don't know what IP ranges we're fully pinning on uh, you know pinning on stuff so I was like all right we're just gonna we're gonna not pin things down. 
Uh, so SSH22 is, I'm sorry everybody, is going to remain 0000, which makes me kind of like, mm, but we'll figure it out. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Aw, oh, chin chin. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to see the, hint, the handle, so. Uh, thank you for, yes, I, I did do a TDD infrastructure talk. Uh, I do a lot of talks about infrastructure testing. Um, thank you. I appreciate you watching it. Any feedback, uh, improvements, I'm always open to hearing them. So always reach out. Um, hopefully this is a boundary uh, exploration that you'll find useful as well. I've got an eek and an oh no. Oh, I love our <laughs> chat already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, there's nothing wrong with it, but if I'm thinking about this more critically from a production standpoint, right, uh, I guess this is where when you do want to configure something like this, you might want to use a sort of self-hosted runner, right? Um, and that's where that's to be, that's next iteration. So uh, note to self, if you or any of you who decide to use that reference architecture, um, this security group don't, unless you know the pinned IP address ranges for your SaaS product or where you're running Terraform Cloud, you can't lock these down. Okay. Uh, if I was running it locally, I could pin this to my public IP address maybe, but you know, I learned my lesson. That broke a couple things, so don't do that. Um, all right, so the other thing is that they created a security group rule for port 9200. I don't remember what 9200 is for. I I looked at it up. I looked it up and I don't remember. So you know what? We're going to go look it up now. Um, boundary port 9200. Listeners. Okay. Um. There is a. Again, it, there's nothing wrong about it. It's just a. Uh, some of this is really more about. It's a newer product. Yeah, a lot. It's not an Elasticsearch port. What's interesting is that it is the boundary controller port. Um, and so, let's see. Uh, where is this architecture for port 9200? Oh, I love how there's Cisco switching too. Hmm. Mm. Okay, so boundaries API access. So that's where the boundary API is. So we need 9200 for the boundary controller API. Yeah, I'll zoom in. Thanks, Phobia. Yeah, so it's 9200, which is good to know. So that's for the API. And the question is, who's contacting the API? I know it's probably just me and Terraform Cloud because I know, well, I need it for Terraform Cloud because Terraform Cloud uh, does do boundary configuration here. So by the way, I already set up boundary. It has like orgs and stuff. I use the Terraform provider. So I think 9200 is one of those situations where I cannot lock it down either because I need Terraform Cloud to access this as well. Lovely. Uh, okay, just so I remember this because I'm, I guarantee you I'm gonna ask you, Tracy, to remind me, and then I won't remember it at all. Okay, what's just, up? Well, I'm just going to put a comment on here that says, needs to be open for TFC. Because <laughs> I guarantee you, I will go back to this and forget why I did this in the first place. <laughs> Understood. Yes. Uh, and then this security group rule uh, I'm just gonna make a note to myself as well. This is for, sorry everybody, I know it's kind of dark. Let me just switch it to light mode and then maybe that will be a little bit, you can see the comments a little bit easier too. Uh, material thing, light, there we go. How's that? Ooh. <laughs> yep, you can see it, you can definitely see it. Okay, so this is for boundary API. So I guess this is where I access boundary to configure stuff. So this would be, let's say this 9200 port on my browser is where uh, I would be accessing it, which I know is hard to see, but there's a load balancer uh, DNS plus 9200. So that's good. That means that I can't close that down, which is bad and good. I don't know. I'm 
curious what other people think. You know, is it if you have authentication in front of it, which we do have authentication in front of it, is it that bad? It probably is, but <laughs> Tracy, you're laughing, but I don't because know. Because I'm, I'm like in your head, you have an answer. You might not like the answer, but you have an answer. Well, okay, so you were you you worked in data centers, yeah. Yeah, don't remind me. Yes. Did you have like the physical cages, like the actual like for the racks? It depended. Yes and no. So yeah, it depended on on what part of the data center I was in. The data center I was in was uh, government related, but we also had certain other stuff that we dealt with. So some stuff was behind cages but, and some stuff wasn't. I mean, you had to double cat card to get yourself in there in the first place. So like at that point, <laughs> if you were supposed to be in there, you were probably supposed to be in there. Oh, well, you see, but that's the thing, like, right. It's uh, you, you don't just like assume someone's going to go into the data center. Uh, you know, you have the scanners and the key cards in place. So I'm like, if I have the scanner and key card in place, uh, maybe Do I really need a cage behind both of the scanners and the key cards. No, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Just, I don't know. I, Anyway, so basically in order for me to automate my boundary, like basically in order for me to automate boundary using Terraform Cloud, I guess I need to keep this open, which maybe another stream I'll come back and fix this and maybe use a self-hosted runner. Um, oh, is that Gambit? It is. So for those who have not streamed with either Tracy or myself, uh, I, I'm easily distracted by my teammates' pets because I do not have them of my own. Hello, Gambit. <laughs> he does not care. He doesn't. All right, watch Rosemary. Oh, we're doing work. Hi, Gambit. Does he only walk over when I when I'm talking to you, or he just? <laughs> you and Melissa, yeah. <laughs> I'll stream. You you get to you get to uh, meet the illustrious Gambit now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, stream. Uh, okay. All right, next one. What is 9201 do? Didn't you look at that while we were on the page for 9200? Well, no, because it says 9200. I don't see 9201 on here. Hold on, let me see. Wow. Okay. Oh. No, 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 no search. No result, it really? None? Mm -hmm. All right, hold on, let me try this other one. What is it like, the, secu the secure version? No results. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Ah, here we go. Here we go. High ability, high HA installation, blah, 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 blah. Oh. Workers must have access to the controller's port default 9201. Oh, there's a diagram. Thank you, Code Phobia. Yes. Okay. This is helpful. Okay. You see, this is what happens when you just like borrow some, some configuration somewhere and you don't actually dig into it and then you do it in retrospect. And you're like, there are things that we could improve, but then you don't remember what things are where. Yeah. Okay. So I don't like comment, like code comments all the time, but this is where it becomes useful. Okay. So this is probably the implementation of the architecture, which is also quite helpful. There's lines everywhere. Um, I only have one controller and one worker though. I don't have like the three zones. So uh, that also might be important. Um, here is this 9201. See, okay, so clients communicate, clients, so it's like my laptop, communicates to controller on 9200 and workers access controller on 9201. So the question is, if this is only, uh, let me go back to here. Okay. If 9201 is communication between controllers and workers, could I lock this down further? I think I could. Yeah. Because right now this is zero, zero, zero. I need to around the port access to the host system in order to provide connectivity. Yeah. So really yeah. it should just be between, I should allow workers to communicate to the controller. So I need perhaps either the worker security group or the CIDR block that has the workers, which is my public subnet. 
So chat, so. chat, you got any feedback over here? You all got <laughs> you all got scarily quiet. I was I was relying on you for some of this. <laughs> you know, I think it it could work. It could work. You're just all right. I mean, we can try it. It's not like we don't have time to try it. I know. This is what this is the whole point. I mean, it's better. You always need to do off to things. Yeah. Off to that is off. true. Yes, that's true. Okay. Cider block. Uh, all right. So let's just see if I can lock down communication from worker to controller because the it, I assume this is allowing the workers to communicate back to the controller. Uh, there's nothing here that says about how the controllers communicate to each other, though. So I wonder if there's also some communication like cross controller as well, but I'm not sure. But also does the database do this as well? Hold on. Okay. So Postgres controller communicates to Postgres, but that should be fine. And then it says controller goes to worker. So then worker communicates back to controller on 9201. Okay. Let's try this. Let's change this to security group. I'm going to go back to browser. Uh, security group. World. Let's go back to the AWS provider. I'll bump it the font. OK. OK. Cider blocks. Source security group, depending on type. All right, so let's actually allow from the source security group, which is the worker. I think it's this. Copy paste. <laughs> I know, everybody laughs at me. Everybody's like, why are you doing so much copy and pasting? It's easier this way. OK, I oh, know. I didn't do the right one. Airform format. Fumped. Sorry. I have to remind myself to say fumped when you're on the stream. No, you can say format. It's okay. <laughs> it's a Monday. We're all kind of, this is our chill. This is our chill stream. We usually our, our less chill stream is on Friday. <laughs> because more, we're more less. awake. Just yeah. lightly. Okay, so I've got a source security group for worker. Uh, the worker security group is here. I think that this is added to the EC2 instances, but just to make sure, um, AWS security group, group dot worker. I'm gonna check if it is actually added to the, oh, I just missed it. I think I just missed it. Okay, so it is. So the worker is being added to the security group. So basically any EC2 instance belonging to this worker security group should be able to now communicate to the controller. Okay. So in the spirit of making tiny changes, because tiny changes are great, uh, uh, only allow workers to communicate to controller on 9201. Woo, push. Let's see. And if we're lucky, this works fine. But is there anything else in here? Egress controller, worker controller. Yeah. Anybody have good ways that they track their security groups? I mean, I don't have any good ones, unfortunately. No. Uh -uh. No. I don't think anybody really does. And, you know, I know they had some visualizers too, which allowed you to do that. They do. They do. Fancy ones. Oh. All right, so we're gonna wait for this. Uh, my favorite, actually, Tracy, I've never asked you this. What? What's your favorite thing to do while you wait for Terraform to run? <laughs> Uh, or anything to run. So let's see. Pre concise diff. Uh, well, no, even post concise diff. Um, bathroom break, run and turn the kettle on, or grab Gambit a snack. Or all three, depending on what I'm applying. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's like flip the kettle, use the bathroom. Look at him if he's pouting. Ignore him if he's not pouting. Give him a treat. Run back. It's still going. Uh, run to make sure I don't have a package. Run back. It's still going. Uh, start making another cup of coffee and pour the kettle on top of the tea bag. Or my trainer, depending. Uh, and then maybe when I come back, it's it's done. I love it. <laughs> I feel like I am, I don't, I go and work on something else and then I get super distracted. And forget uh, it's there. And forget it's there. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that one. I don't, I should go and like get the kettle. I don't do that. It's, okay. it's easier than me forgetting and then an hour and a half later going, oh crap. And then having to flip back over and you know, it's finally through. So I leave it on the screen and then I do something else. And the pet, yes. Yeah, see, <laughs> and the pet. Okay, so just to make sure that I didn't break something originally, that this is actually working the way I think it is, um, I just did a quick SSH to uh, one of my Kubernetes nodes. So basically I onboarded a bunch of Kubernetes nodes into mm -hmm. Boundary, uh, which is core infra and then sessions. So the way that Boundary works um, is that Boundary allows you to create these projects and the projects are uh, allowing you to group uh, the user and the groups and the teams with the type of infrastructure or the endpoints that they want to access. So it could be yeah. any TCP endpoint. Um, for me, I onboarded a couple different endpoints. The first endpoint that I onboarded was the EKS nodes. Um, this allows me to SSH to my Kubernetes cluster nodes. If you're someone in operations, you might do this just to debug something on the machines and you know lock things down. There are a couple of reasons why you might want it as a break glass mechanism. And then you also have HCP console. Uh, this is actually a fun one. This actually is using the private endpoint for HCP console. Um, and so you can actually omit the public endpoint for uh, the SaaS cloud platform basically and just lock it down to like a private uh, network and you can use Boundary to help you get to HCP console. Oh, nice. Yeah, which is really cool. I was like, I was so proud of myself for discovering this. It was like, because if you can use any TCP endpoint, I was like, oh, why not? So this is actually pointing to my console endpoint. Anyway, um, just to show that Boundary is working with the current secured groups before I apply the non-working one. This one is saying target SSH, my session is active. So I'm just gonna cancel it because it shows that my session is active. And uh, if you do this in Boundary, um, it will actually cancel the session, right? So it closes the session. So I was previously connected and now it told me that you're not connected anymore, which is pretty neat. All right. so. Let's hope none of this breaks. I should still be able to click around. I should be able to SSH. I should be able to do all this. So I'm going to click confirm and apply on Terraform Cloud. Yeah. But in Boundary, uh, the Boundary configuration I have, there's two teams. Uh, mm -hmm. There is, there, well, there are a couple groups. There's a leadership team and there are a couple users. There's Rob, there's me, and there's Melissa. Uh, and so Rob, who's like part of the development team might only want to access products, for example, they, you know, uh, you don't want necessarily core infrastructure access. So these are all divided like that. Um, so as someone who's an operations team member, I have admin quote unquote, which meant, means I can see, uh, or I can, I have the scope of targets in both the core infra as well as the products infrastructure. If anybody's interested, I can go through the Terraform for that. At least that way you can kind of examine how that maps together. Okay, apply finished. Yay. Uh, okay. So, did this break anything? Guess we'll find I out. I, I don't know. So the, if it did break something, it would be from controller to worker. So. Let me do the authentication sequence, this authentication sequence again. Make Postgres operations. So I'm just gonna swip, switch to a different endpoint and see what happens. Um, oh, that seems to be oh. fine. I think it's fine. 
Yeah, there's no, I mean, I didn't populate anything in my database. So yeah, uh, I can do this, make SSH operations. Oh, right, the share. Okay, hold on, make SSH operations. I really need to get that stream deck. I don't know why, I just, I keep putting it off. I did that with a Nintendo Switch. So for those who are tuning into the stream, uh, I finally got a Nintendo Switch after telling the team I would get it for a year and a half. And there was great rejoicing. <laughs> There's literally an entire thread of rejoicing. And oh my God, finally, now I can talk to you about games. <clears throat> I couldn't help it. I don't know. Well, just I know. Too. I know. Okay. Well, the good news is that it works again. So, uh, I think this is fine. It doesn't seem like it's bad. Um, let's look. You say that now. <laughs> I know. Maybe it broke something. Okay, so let me cancel. Let me see if I can still terminate it. Canceling terminated. Will okay. So this didn't break any communication. I think. <laughs> I, why are you there? To you're laughing. I can tell. You're you're just like, what is what is <laughs> <laughs> It didn't break anything. Dot dot dot. I think. Well, you never know. Like I don't see any like error messages really are coming up and and from a workflow standpoint nothing seems to be you know, nothing seems to be falling apart. Um database controller. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so this is the security group. I know it's hard to see. Let me bump it up. Okay. Oh wow, yeah. Oh, that's that's. Big. Oh, that's maybe too much. Hold yeah, on. I want to come back just a. Sophisticated SSH tunneling. tunneling. You know, it could be. I think there's a lot more to it, uh, and it's just there haven't been real, really any features that we've, you know, we've uh, we've grown it to that. It could be more, right? Yeah, it's like there are a lot of things to it that we haven't touched with it yet, and and there's potential that for it to grow. So, um, I'm kind of excited to to figure out what other things are being added. Um, you know, check out the boundary, uh, you know, repository. But they have an open roadmap for the most part. But they're definitely and considering it, adding a lot of features to it. And now I want to call boundary a cultured mole based on sophisticated SSH tone. Like boundary is now a cultured mole. I will not, I will not move from that statement. <laughs> oh, There's a mole like somewhere drinking tea going, it's time to go to it. And just kind of. <laughs> nice. I'm going to shorten this quid because it's just easier. In my current job, we integrate our bastion with our IDP and there are lots of bastions. Oh yeah. Oh, I feel you. Yeah, that's definitely. I think that that's what's been kind of neat with Boundary, right? Uh, I don't have to remember which endpoints are which to configure or connect to, uh, especially with like some of the HCP console and vault stuff I've been doing. Um, it's kind of been nice to just deploy Boundary into my subnets and then use them to connect to vault and console. Because uh, like otherwise I would be using the, the public endpoint and that kind of, I mean, it just kind of gets annoying to a certain degree, um, remembering which public endpoint I'm connecting to. And so this is pretty interesting. You can also do a lot of sophisticated worker target uh, target registration and stuff too, which is kind of neat. I haven't explored that to be honest, but I feel like that's one of the things that we should explore further. Okay, so we've locked that down. I'm glad we didn't break anything. Agreed. Okay, all right, next bit. Uh, for those who are not so familiar with refactoring to fix security groups, uh, I highly recommend you do it carefully. <laughs> <laughs> small changes, very, very, very small change. Yes, make small changes because you don't know which one you didn't work that didn't work. Okay, allow web worker. Why would I allow web worker? Web to worker. What does that mean? Allow web worker. Mm. I don't know. That is, I don't think it's on the ports, right? So. Oh, 
health check port should use 9200. Is there an ALB before the worker? Uh, there is an ALB. Let's let me just double check in this config. I believe there is an ALB in front of the worker. Oh yeah, good point. Maybe it is the, the ALB. Yeah, that's a really good point, Cocopia. Uh, let's see. ALB. Okay. Player target group controller. LB controller. Where is LB worker? Nope. There is no layer. Well, that's fascinating. Uh, no, there appears to not be one, maybe. Hmm. It's at the very top. It's at the very top here? No. Oh no. Oh no, not that block, but I thought I saw something, but I don't think I did. I don't think the workers have a load balancer. I know that I definitely know the controllers have a load balancer, but not the workers. The controllers have a load balancer, but I think they're just porting back. the The back end port is ninety two hundred, so I don't know why eight thousand is there. Hmm. Puzzle. What a puzzle. Because really, I'm just accessing the worker on any port, right? Like I could access, as long as I, as long as the worker itself is able to, as long as I can access the worker, right? It's allowing anything coming in, which, let me look at 9202 first and let's just figure out what that is. So 9202 is clients must have access to workers ports. So this would be my laptop to the worker. So that is more clear to me. This I could lock down to my laptop. So that would actually be fine. Codephobia. Maybe search all files for 80 to 8,000 to see if there's an egress rule that matches the port. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's see. Uh, 8,000. That's the only thing. Hmm. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, that's, that's, I guess that doesn't need to be there, maybe. You know what I might do? Let's comment this out. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of stumped too. Let's comment this out. I don't know if it works or it's a problem or not, but it, maybe it's allowing so what's really interesting is it's allowing everything to 8,000, but I don't have anything needing 8,000. So maybe I'll just comment that out. And if it does work fine, um, remove worker port 8,000 access. I just don't see it anywhere. So maybe we'll go back. And once again, run this manually. Terraform validate. <laughs> fair point, fair point. Thank you. Terraform pumped. Validate. Oh yeah, hold on. This is it's because it's a local module. This is a mess, by the way. I'll eventually move this to the registry, but Uh, let's see. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay. Q. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, so for those who didn't get a chance to dig into this further, the this boundary deployment is actually a local module, so Eventually, I might split this out into a Terraform, into the Terraform registry, just so it's easier for me to use. Um, any Terraform validate that I do, I have to do under infrastructure, unless I plan to init this this local uh, module. Um, so I just opt not to init the local module, and then I just validate against the larger configuration. But that's a practice. I don't recommend doing the local module. Well, I was doing it because I didn't know if it was something specific that I needed to figure it out. And when I copied it from the reference architecture, there were some unique things that I like doing 
um, it requires like key files and stuff to get loaded uh, mm -hmm. from from local, and I didn't want my key files to be exposed in certain ways, so I, I opted to do it uh, to pull it down to pull a copy of it and do it as a local module. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. The gambit might wander off. He gave up and he's now curled into a... <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, you know what? Screw it. Totoro gets me. I'll just... I'll just go to sleep. She's not going to talk to me. And I can't get any <laughs> of my, my sea snacks, uh, which I will not say because if I say it, he'll wake up. So. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. The database service. Um, yeah, so let me actually show kind of what what I ended up personally changing about uh, some of the way that this is loading. So you do need to uh, load your private keys, for example, uh, mm -hmm. private uh, keys for SSHing, right, into, um, into boundaries controller and worker. Uh, and so there were some things that, uh, you know, some things that I just don't, from a pattern standpoint, I wanted to have a little bit of flexibility. So I just updated uh, a couple things like that. You'll notice in the reference architecture, the file provisioner uh, references a very explicit path. Um, and I just choose not to do that because I don't want it to be an explicit path if I have to direct it to something. So I actually do a variable check. And then I, if I define it, then I use that definition. Otherwise I use the default, which I've created, which is the bin path here. Um, I don't commit the private key. I only commit the public key as well as the bi the boundary binary, which loads on there. You probably want to build it with Packer. It's probably the better way to do it. But I did not. I just used cloud and uh, the user in it, the user data. Okay, so let's see if port 8000 was not necessary. If it was necessary, we might have broken something. Oh, Lord. But I have faith. Thank you. Well, this seems a lot easier than the last time I did this. First of all, because I'm getting help, <laughs> but also, <laughs> but also because like I wasn't foolish. This time, I'm not foolish enough to go through and like do a mass refactor, refactor, which was my mistake the last time. In my haste, I was doing a rush like mass refact batch refactor. Mm-hmm. That's what happens when you do it the morning of. I know. <laughs> Like, you know, I was, I was trying to get it to work and I was really excited. I also got the HCP thing like done in the hour before. And I was like, I had not intended to do it. I just added scope to myself for no apparent reason because I was foolish. Um, I have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing, but it's true. I just I'm laughing with no, you, not at you. Absolutely laughing. I, know. I have no you. sense of scope whatsoever sometimes. I was like, this sometimes you have to just sometimes you have to just tell yourself this is enough um okay let me go to boundary configuration terraform output raw boundary development password so i'm just going to log in as the development team as a development team member because i just want to make sure that the end-to-end -end workflow is actually working the way i expect it to yeah. uh oh no oh no see what's in here. Oh, products password. Not a team. Please choose a different scope. Yeah, please choose a different scope. Sorry, everybody. Products password. Oh, okay. somebody okay. actually said Terraform validate. I hate I missed that when that was typed. <laughs> yeah, I know. I did not Terraform validate. I was like, whoa, you know, Pre-commit hooks. Really, I should just add pre-commit hooks to everything from now on. I'm just, I'm tired of running Terraform Validate. <laughs> like Terraform Validate with the typing. Okay, so uh, I'm logged in as Rob. Rob is on the product team. Rob should not have any access, as you can uh, identify now, to core infrastructure, 403, 403, yay. Uh, but should have access to products infrastructure. So sessions terminated there, uh, and I have a Postgres target. So what I'm going to do is target that Postgres target. That seems like the thing to do, right? 
and make sure this all works. Postgres products. I have I made a pebcac yet? No. Wait. Yes. I mean, other than the one dot five that we already have. No. What is the one dot? What's the dot, dot five? Hold the on. dot five <laughs> was uh, technically half OBS, half something you were doing. But I think it was around the resizing of the screen. Oh, okay. So it was only a, a 0.5, uh, half point infraction. Okay. <laughs> only a half point infraction. Only a half point infraction. Okay. Okay, so it did connect, which is good. There's no table. I didn't load the tables in yet, so. Um, make SSH operations, let me share. So I don't know if I needed 8,000, I guess. We've searched all the files. There was no other anything really uh, that indicated we needed it. So um, I'm going to uh, remove it Ooh. and see what happens. What do you think is going to happen? I don't, I mean, given that we did remove it, nothing has apparently happened to it. So I have this suspicion that it, it probably didn't, it was probably for some other kind of access but I don't know what. Is it for like maybe logs? I just don't see anything in the docs about it. Let me take a look. Um, right over here. Boundary. Hey. Port 8000. It's just not in the docs, so. Yeah, the other one I found wasn't in the docs. I had to do some Google sorcery. Accessing backend servers. Boundary target. Oh, oh, okay. Maybe it was because there was a target with 8,000 in the original reference architecture and I just didn't take it out. You found what I found. Yeah, out. maybe for boundary HT connect HTTP demo. Yeah, that might be it. Okay, so since I don't need it, I'm just gonna take it out. It, it just didn't need to happen. Um, okay, so 9202 to worker. This was from client to worker. Um, so. Fortunately, I have a variable here that I previously created that has the client cider block. And let me just make sure. This is my public client cider block. So I did lock it down already. Yay me, I already locked this down three weeks ago. <laughs> oh, right, switch the share. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so yay, I locked this down three weeks ago, which is good. Um, and it only allowed it to the controller from my client cider block, which is good. Uh, what else did I lock down? I locked down the module. I locked down that. Okay, that seems fine. Okay, so I'm going to just lock this down here and I'm pretty sure the egress worker should be fine. I don't want to touch too much of that. CD, boundary, configuration. No, it was deployment. Perform format. Perform init. Grab everything there. Terraform validate. Let's just check. Thinking. Okay. It's a big configuration. This is, I think, the, the a monolith, it, it is a bit monolithic. Um, unfortunately, that's kind of the part of the problem with demo code, what I realized is that when you have demo code, um, you don't really have that much of an option to bundle it into separate repositories. Oops. Right. Because then it's just like two extra hops for someone else to go get something. Yep. So you have to kind of bundle everything together, which is, you know. I'm gonna need you to clear. alias clear to CLR so you don't make that that mistake, yeah. You can count it. You have to drop it in the chat as a pepcac. I'll do that. I'll, I'll oh. concede to that. <laughs> I'll concede to that. That's a full pepcac. <laughs> so I'm, I'm putting... sorry. I'm just, so I type fast and, and completely inaccurate. <laughs> I'm like, clear, here. Clear, here. Clear, cur. Clear, clear. I just, clear. I just need one button to do a clear. I, but like whenever I do demos, I it's typed fast, quickly, and very inaccurately. Everybody. Um, well, oh yes, commit. 
only allow client to access workers. Get push. Now the question is, I guess I don't need anybody else to access it because I don't need Terraform Cloud to access it. I don't, I, it's just me. Unless Crazy, you would like to access it. Which I don't know if I'm, I'm a bit of feared. I'll, I'll, I'll abstain. You're a bit right of feared. I'm a bit of feared. Why are you a bit of feared? Because it's working now. If I, if I log in, it's going to break. Just no, by virtue break. of logging in. Okay. It's, or it's, use me, I mean, use me as a test subject. I do not mind. Okay. Cool. Oh, this is this. Okay. So <laughs> we got, I think those security groups may be reevaluated. I think that should be better now. I think there are other security groups and they have to do with the database, which this one I have not touched because I'm scared to touch these. Uh, although they seem pretty well restricted overall. Uh, this is the database security groups, database.tf. And I don't really see anything that's too, I don't think there's anything I could lock down. Maybe this, oh, allow all, allow any ingress. I don't know if I would allow any ingress. Wait, do I want to allow any ingress to my database? No. I don't think that sounds right. So I allow controller SG. Is this so that, oh, maybe this is for testing, right? This might've been for demoing the, um, this might have been for demoing uh, the, the capability to do the Postgres stuff with Boundary. Okay. Possibly. Possibly. I'm going to just mm. say yes. <laughs> Probably. Because I actually have a separate database. Um, what I've been doing when I, when I run the Boundary connection commands to, the, to Postgres, that's actually running to a different database. So for those who are watching and, and looking at it and confused about the databases, there's actually two databases. There's the database for Boundary and then there's the database for my application. And so I run, when I, whenever I run uh, an Ask Boundary to connect to the databases, um, it's using my uh, application database and not Boundary's internal database. So there's two databases. This force replacement. All right. Hopefully this still allows me to access it. I, unless this is cached, in which case I don't know. Deauthenticate. Um, okay. Make SSH operations again. I feel like this is so far okay. Local share. Okay, so the good news is the operations thing seems to be working fine. Clear, make Postgres products. Try that, make sure that works. Services. Yeah. Oh, oh, there you go. Tracy, you wanna try getting into boundary? <laughs> <sighs> I can. Here. Okay, I'm gonna send it to you over the endpoint over Slack. All right. <laughs> I would send it over the Twitch, but I don't know if any of y'all are. <laughs> uh, so what? I just want to make sure before I give everybody access <laughs> to my boundaries. <laughs> um, it should be locked down, so Tracy shouldn't be able to get to it. All right, hold on. Let me find the. I really have more messages okay. than I thought. Oh, here we go. Copy link. And we are pasting. It should just say no. Uh, you need oh, off. Yeah. Don't, you need off. Don't worry about it. Thanks, Queen. <laughs> yeah, no. So I've got authenticate. You are authenticated with global. No auth methods. No auth methods were found for this scope. Well, I'm here's. You on your screen. So. I don't think that is working then. Did the security group? <laughs> oh no, wait, I, wait a second. Did it not actually, hold on a second. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, it's literally what you had on your screen a few seconds ago, but I am going to send that to you in Slack. Okay, so we didn't, okay. So we made a critical mistake. We didn't <laughs> lock down the load balancer. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. So we locked down that thing. All right. We're, we're, let me go back to the load balancer. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. I believe you. You're good, good peeps. So then uh, let me lock down this load balancer and then we'll test it. Because uh, I think there's a load balancer security group that's just allowing everything to come. No, there is. No, 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 no. I did tell it. What? I did tell it to lock it down. Did it not lock down anything? Huh? What's your definition of lockdown? Well, I did it to the public IP. I think that's about as good as we're going to get. <laughs> I think. Chat, oh, what say you? I see. Yep, yeah, we're, yeah, we're good, good peeps here. I see. Hold on a second. Did I actually not specify question mark? I mean, things might have changed a bit. Security group. Hold on. This is not it? Is this it? Forces replacement. Okay. Variables. Uh, okay. I don't actually know what is being passed through? Hmm. Variables. What's in here? Uh, let's see. Client cider. IP block. Okay. Client cider. IP block. Tracing it all down. All turtles. Client cider block. Okay. So I did that. Mm -hmm. Where are you, boundary? Client cider block. We're boundary going to pause module. this for a second. I'm going to swap to the browser because I don't want necessarily. Where is this? OK. So it's using Terraform Auto, so it should be in there. Uh, what? Hmm. Let's go back to security groups and investigate what is happening here. I think it's supposed to lock down unless it didn't actually do anything, which I'm kind of sad if it, that was the case. No, it's, it's only locking it down to that, unless there's like multiple public IPs, but. Why would my controller be allowing that? It's on there twice. It's only on there once. There's only one inbound rule. Oh, see, okay, so I can't see the entire line. So all I see is the the, the yeah. name twice. That's There's so your... strange. What is going on? What happens if you click on the other one with the same name? There's like multiple. This is the Oh, never mind. Never mind. I didn't see the the that it was load balancer versus the normal one. Okay. Never mind. Well, there is a point to this though. Like Oh no. What did you do? <laughs> I think the controller wait, but do the controllers need 9200 because they're getting access through No. They don't need zero, 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 because I think I'm doing boundary configuration through the load balancer endpoint. 92, oh, 92, yeah, okay. But it doesn't need to be, 9200, Quint doesn't, it doesn't need to be zero, 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 does it? I don't, I don't think it does, because I'm using the boundary endpoint to control it. So 9200 will have to come from the load balancer, ideally, and then, the client would access through the load balancer here. So then why is it that it's, huh? Unless you have the same public IP, Tracy. I mean, I do get some mail from you here. Um, let's see. I forgot to tell you this One came time. in the mail the other day. 
No, 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 no. This literally came this weekend. So I don't know if you want this. I don't know. I can tell you what's okay. I'll throw it away then. Forgot to tell you about that. All I did was send you. All I did was. I I know. I know. I know. So people on the viewing stream, I was being literal. Yes, I do get mail for her here. It's very weird as to why, but that's a thing. But I don't think this is symbolic of the same public IP. No. (laughs) Okay. So there's that. Uh, I'm so befuddled. I mean, oh yeah, no, I don't want this. Yeah, no, I like the stuff. I don't like the price. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna throw that. Okay. Okay, right. um, so we don't need this open for TFC note. You know what? We're going to we're going to break all the things. Uh, I'm yes. gonna lock this down to the client to the load balancer only. So where's the load balancer? I load balancer security group. Ah, here we are. Security group controller load balancer. Okay, we're going to say the source of this. Source. Oh, wait. oh, it popped hmm? up, didn't it? There we go. Never mind. Boundary configuration. No, deployment. Because the configuration uses the load balancer. So in theory, I don't really need 9200. I don't think. I'm just gonna re it just to make sure, but I think it'll be fine, but. Oh, 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 there we go. All right. No, it's fine. It's happy. Okay. Git status, git add boundary. Git commit only allow access to controllers from LB. Hmm? Oh no, I still had that tab up. I'm just gonna, whenever we try it again, I'm just gonna recopy it and throw it in the browser. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like this is one of those situations where, I mean, I guess this is why people don't, people don't take too much time to dig into security groups because it is, it is hard. Like this is not the most complicated system but it is very hard to get it right, so. And I don't even remember. I think I just did control F to, to every instance of zero, 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 and that was all I did the last time. <laughs> and then I went through and started to fix it, but I, I think it's probably better just to go through and see what's going on. I swore it was through the load balancer. Though. That's what I don't understand. It's through the load balancer IP address. <laughs> Or load balancer DNS address. Hmm. Yeah. But in the high availability, in the HA docs, it's the. Forgot all about those docs. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah, so the load, what I basically did was, so the controllers says, the controllers, apparently the security groups were, yeah, there's a direct line between client and worker. Yeah, so this seems to be fine, 9201. But then what happened was that it looked like 9200 was going to, uh, directly to controller, right? So it was 000 for the controller, which in this diagram, it shows that the application load balancer is supposed to be the only one that accesses the controller as well as the workers. So the workers are left open, but the application load balancer needs to connect to the controller. And then boundary client should authenticate to controller through the load balancer. So I just don't, I'm confused now, but because I did set, I think what happened was that I set the controller I set the controller load balancer to only allow from my IP address. So that sh- that's consistent, I think. That makes a little bit of sense to me. But I gave the IP address to Tracy and Tracy was able to access it. Yes. Which meant 
did it mean that there was a security group here? And that what that what I noticed was there's a security group here that I previously left open because I thought that Terraform Cloud needed it, but I actually don't think this boundary API one needs to be accessible from Terraform Cloud API. I think it only needs to be allowed from the load balancer. So that means that I could use the load, I could use the load balance endpoint to allow access from TFC. Ah, oh, this is very confusing. Really, we need a diagram thingy. Is there, if there's a diagram thingy that I could use, that would be very helpful. Oy. I mean, you can whiteboard it. Can it? How? Terrible diagram. You got a tablet? I don't know where, it, it's somewhere around here. I Oy. had one, but then I disconnected it. That's I not tried using my, I tried using, <laughs> would you like me to add another code cat? Uh, you're only at 2.5 so far. Um, I did try using my iPad as a whiteboard and it went surprisingly well. Um, I was not expecting that. Um, mm -hmm. That's actually not a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, Quinn is right though. There's a direct line between client and worker. And worker. So yeah, and 9200 is needed by the client, but the, the, the strange thing is like where, which 9200? I think it's because we're mapping the same port from back end, front end port of the load balancer to the back end port of the load balancer. And maybe that's where I got mixed up in the first place. So we'll see. It's easy to get mixed up. This is this is like a rabbit hole from the third, fourth level of hill. Um, I know, right? I don't like security groups. They're just big. OK. So there's good news, then there's bad news. Oh, dear. There's good news is that it appears to have now locked it down slightly. Okay. Learn. Learn. Hi. Learn. You came back. So the hardest thing to work with when setting up boundaries is AWS. Um, yeah, the hardest yeah, thing to work so. with on anything when setting up something is AWS, but don't tell I anybody I said that. AWS security groups. I, I mean, <laughs> honestly, AWS security groups make me, make me sad inside sometimes. And I get it. Like, I understand this, like, I just, they're just, now it's not working crazy. All right, you want, well, so do I even need to test again? Cause no, cause now it's broken. Now okay, it's broken wait. for me too. Oh, okay. So <laughs> we're, we're not necessarily back to where we started, but yeah. Yeah, we're, 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 we're having, is this still healthy? It says it's healthy. So the load balancer accesses boundaries API correctly. <laughs> So how? Uh, I'm confused. Where is this? Let me try. Let me see something. Just, uh, just for plunks <laughs> and giggles. Let me go over here and <laughs> I want to see something. See, it says it's healthy. I don't know if it will deregister if it's. Uh, it wouldn't. I mean, it would deregister it by now if it's unhealthy. I mean, I mean, we could check, but it seems fine. How come I still can't access the load balancer then? But what's your definition of fine? Um, I don't know at this point, but it, it's not happy. It, it's got the angry, sad face page. Okay. <laughs> Which means that when we locked down 9200, it didn't like something. And that's still the endpoint, right? Like nothing's changed on the endpoint. Mm -mm. You just bought some stuff down exceptionally well, apparently. I just put down controller load balancer. Unless the controller, unless the load balancer is not, maybe I missed something on the load balancer and how load balancers attached to security groups, which is also very likely because my brain is kind of like blagged. But you know, I feel like there is a security group on here somewhere, I suspect. Unless it's an ALB, in which case there are certain other restrictions, but. Okay, so inbound, but where is this SE6? Let's look at the load balancer. Did it not attach? That is also something to consider if it just didn't attach. I will, I will. Oh, now it's unhealthy. Oh, that only took a while. I wonder and it might if not this have attached. Never there. Yeah, you think so? That sounds reasonable. Maybe it wasn't ever attached to it. 
Because if it's talking to it and it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, but now you can't get to it? Mm. Yeah. It Let might not have been up. attached. Oh, nothing from the chat. I think we're all just puzzled at this point. Okay, hold on. Where is this load balancer? Okay. L AWS LB controller, subnets, but where is this security group being attached? Anywhere. No. Oh, no. I was gonna say, you could try the, the magnifying glass on the left. Uh, I find it easier to find things that way instead of, looking, yeah. instead okay. of just that one file. Let's see. Um, AWS security group. I don't think the low controller LB is ever, is actually attached to anything. Come to think of it. Ooh. No, it's not attached to anything. That's why. Okay, so the security group is not actually attached to the ALB. In which case, I don't actually know, I don't remember, I don't actually recall this, but I'm pretty sure ALBs don't, yeah, this AWS console. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is why I don't want to do it through the console, honestly. I'm like, this is not, okay, hold on. Security groups. There we are. Yeah, we didn't actually. So somehow the security groups are not in here. Um... Which would also explain why it probably didn't work, because once you add it, security group that controller, ID. Yeah, it's also gigantic to learn, so <laughs> I'm not sure if half of it is like it's just making it look worse because of the console, <laughs> or like, <laughs> but it, it they did change it, so I I'm I'm having a hard time with the change. Uh, Let's like sure. Is there a nifty example to help you there? Oh, you got it. Okay. Let's see. Isn't there a nifty example in the TF doc to help you there? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Examples are how we got here in the first place. Um, yeah. This is the. This is the. Re this is what was missing out of the. This was what was missing out of the resource. At it wasn't. Uh, it didn't have the security group attribute. Um, and I don't, again, like this might be actually mostly my fault, which we have to probably, I don't even know if it is my fault or not, but I might have gone and tried to add the security group and never reverted the commit. Ooh. Which is also probably something that I might have done. I will not pepcack you for that one. Cause I don't know if it was me or not. I just, yeah, we don't know if that's true and, or if it were you. So yeah. So it could have been not me, or it could have just been something that was left over. I don't really know. I, you know, it could have been me while I was doing this and I didn't properly revert. Uh, I just left it there. Um, but now we can fix it. That's the important part. We can part. fix it. Yes, yes, exactly. Be very nice to be able to fix it. Also, I mean, when you're doing something like three hours before the event that you're supposed to present it at, um, uh, I it's, mean, very, it's very easy to forget. I didn't, I didn't do anything anybody else wouldn't do. <laughs> exactly. See, exactly. <laughs> uh, we'll be fine. Okay. So, uh, the questionable pep cack by me. Uh, I let. I might have left it and then forgot about it. This is how I'm gonna do that one then. See if I can do what I want. Oh no! Uh, so, how's everybody else's Monday going? Oh, it's a Monday. It's absolutely a Monday. I have to. See, oh, I got to show you pictures of all the stuff I did in the garden over the past two weeks. What? Yes, yes. I got all of my exercise over the past two weekends. I carried mulch oh, because I do not own a wheelbarrow and 30 bags of mulch was fun. Wow. I've got, mus I've got muscles now. Um, but yeah, so I got everything done. I got front yard done last week. 
sorry, people, we're plant people. Um, this is why we have the matching matching mugs. Um, but I did the flower part in the front garden last weekend. And then I did the back part of the flower garden and planted all of the veggies yesterday, this past weekend. All I have left are, I'm gonna try watermelons in a container. So now I need to go build a trellis for those. <laughs> watermelons? Yeah. Wait, what? In a container, yeah. Apparently they work really well in a container if you have a trellis and the support system for the things when they start growing. And okay. then I also need to get my herbs out and then I will officially be through. We do not wanna talk about how much money I spent in Home Depot. I went for 30 bags of mulch and came out of the store and the lady went, ma'am, you said you were coming in here for mulch. I was like, I, I was. But ma'am, it looks like you bought the whole store. And I was like, you're you're not wrong. Uh, and then when I went this past weekend, they went, you're, I said, you never saw me. She's like, you're right. I never saw you. And then she kept walking. So that's two weekends in a row at Home Depot. It's horrible. But yeah, the yard is done. Yes. I will have produce. I will have produce for days. Uh, I love that. Yes. The elderly people in my community will be very happy <laughs> this particular summer. I can hear it now. Tracy, you have any more tomatoes? <laughs> I expect them to be sent to me. You and Kat. Cat uh, uh, Cosgrove also went, tomatoes, please send. So I will send some to the both of you. I will send them while they are green so they can ripen on the way. Yeah. Oh, chill Monday in Belgium. Awesome. Oh, chat. Yeah. Sorry. Also, We've got folks right. coming in and out. So hold on. I'll yell. <laughs> it's okay. Hall as well. Uh, okay. So we discovered there was a, another problem. Um, it turns out that what I was not carefully reading, uh, the configuration, goes pepcac pi. Okay. Yeah. We'll call that. Yeah. goes pepcac. Right. Uh, load balancer type network. So it looks like I didn't read this carefully and there's a type network load balancer uh, on... I thought it was an application load balancer. Everyone, it is a network load balancer. Um, there's a difference between the two. So a network load balancer is for probably better, uh, better for like private IP addresses out of data centers. It, it allows you to make a direct IP address correlation okay. uh, as long as it's routable versus application load balancers. You can set the target groups to instances, for example, uh, which actually the network load balancer did let me do it. So I don't, I don't really know what was going on here. Um, kind of strange, not really sure, but boundary deployment. I wish it went back to the individual types of resources. Like you can do something like AWS underscore ALB, um, and then they converge to this AWS underscore LB resource schema. Uh, and now it just confuses me. Did I push that? Yes, I did. Okay. So I went through and I changed it to an application load balancer. Oh, we got a question. So wait, why does the client need to talk to the controller? So the client needs to talk to the controller to authenticate. Uh, yeah, it is for the, yeah, yeah, Quinn, it's for like the web UI and it's so that you can retrieve your token. If you're familiar with Vault, Boundary, I don't want to make a perfect analogy about it, but it uses a very similar sequence where you need to authenticate to Vault, get a token, and then you can access the secrets. So it's very similar to Boundary. Yeah, the auth is not on the worker. The auth is on the controller. Um, and so you have to auth to the controller first, receive a Boundary token effectively, and then the token will allow you to auth, it will allow you to access the workers. Mm -hmm. So it's this two-step process. Um, there is auth on the worker, I think, though, in that in that you'd need the token in order for it to work. Um, it's not like the controller is funneling. It's not like in the Kubernetes control plane where it's like funneling requests to the worker through the controller, like through the API server. It, it basically gives you direct access to the, the client, direct access to the worker. But then you also have the client accessing the controller for the initial authentication. Um, you yeah, know, so it's a little different. Oh, I didn't actually run it. Yeah, and this was this took a while for me to understand, and I, I and again, I think it's probably just because it's a little bit newer. So, 
you know, we're trying to figure out everything. But it took a while for me to understand the sequence of things. But I'm I'm a little slower sometimes too, on the on trying to understand the architecture. Initializing Terraform configuration. Yeah. Meanwhile, it'd be nice if it would like auto generate some. Ding, 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 ding. And then like give you an audible notification. We really need to set up audible notification where it's like, your configuration is ready. Yeah, iTerm does that. I used to set chimes on iTerm so that when it was like done, it would tell me like, hey, Rosemary, come back to a, this terminal. I, I had a growl set up for when I had my other Linux install. I miss my growl Aww. pop ups. And so yeah, I could probably you should bring him back. Oh, growl notifications were it. I thought I was fancy back in the day. Can tell me anything. <laughs> How did you know that was happening? I had this ground notification pop up and let me know what was going on. <laughs> and that was just like, I don't know. I left and it was still running. So I went to the grocery store because it was still running. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody, we're in for a long wait because uh, it turns out a load balancer needs to get replaced. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, the entire load balancer needed to get replaced because we changed the type, right? We went oh, from network right. to application. Hold on. Oh, yeah, that's right. Swap it. Yeah. yeah. Whole thing needs to get replaced. So network to application forces replacement. And then listener needs to get replaced as well. So we, we could be in for, for about five minutes, everybody, five to 10 minutes. If you'd like to go uh, refresh your coffee or your tea, now would be a good time to do so. And I'll expect you back here in about four minutes. I have music on. I don't know if you can hear it on the stream. I can't. Did you did you share it through? Uh, did you share it through I Zoom? I did. Okay, hold on, everybody. While we try, we're gonna try this. I'm gonna bump up the volume on it. Can you hear it? No. no. Did you oh. share it through Zoom? I didn't share it through Zoom. Oh, on the Twitch. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I might just need to turn it off. I don't know if it is playing on the Twitch or not. And I don't want to unmute for fear that like it might explode my earbud. It was loud on Twitch. Oh, thank you. Okay, that was good. Confirming, confirming, confirming. Okay, thank you. Is it better? The bass. Oh, sorry, everybody. I might have burst your earbuds. Yeah, like we totally have Twitch muted because we're looking at each other through another. <laughs> Oh no, I'm so sorry that I got that, that, that made that happen to you. Oh. I think we should count it as a pep talk. We're so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So yeah, Blair and I know we were, uh, we, we had a, a chat about this within our team. So we are using uh, Streambeats Lo-Fi, which is copyright free. Um, so hopefully this is not, uh, it does not violate DMCA. Um, that is our hope, at least. I'm actually going to bump us up on two because that was both our faults. Uh, so that's going to be Pebcat. Oh, 4.5. That's yeah. just, I am, I apologize to everybody in the chat. I had no idea. Twitch would let you know if it violates it. Yeah, I'm wondering, so would Twitch just like email us? Because we've never had one. I know we've had some on YouTube once because of HashiCraft, but we've not, I don't think we've ever had it through Twitch before because We've, we've only started recently playing it. Um, so far, we haven't had anybody message us about this playlist, but uh, if anybody knows any specific other playlists, we appreciate it too. Taylor, uh, my Taylor from Austin, um, hmm. she had a stream on the other night that had some really good music. I'll uh, see if I can find out what she was using. I, I need to see if I added it to my Spotify. Can you link that? It's on the way, Blurn. Oh, also, Blurn, did you get a chance to check out um, Z uh, ZSH over the weekend? Oh, no. Or, and or the um, the theme that I, uh, I told you about. Ah, okay. So Twitch will mute the audio on the video on demands, and then you'll get warned. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sean. I hope I said it right. It is Sean, right? Um, thank appreciate you, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning. We, too. we like this. We like we like hanging out with y'all. It's not you know we, we're showing a lot of imperfect stuff, so, but you know it's always uh... yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. 
life is your absolutely real life. understand yeah. the real life yeah i'm with you on that okay so bad news bears uh application requires not application load balancers require not tcp it requires h right it, because it's layer seven it's only http or https <laughs> i don't think it's going to ha you know what you know what because only the workers th because the workers are the one funneling the request the tcp requests could you just get away with HTTP on a controller, like the controller load balancer? Because I'm only doing it through web UI anyway, right? And I'm only doing it through an API call to retrieve something. Probably. So. That sounds let's... pretty reasonable, actually. Should be. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I, I say, yeah, let's, yeah, I say try okay. it. So, uh, step one, uh, fix target load mount target group which i changed to http um but before we do that let us mm -hmm. check this target group because i'm going to read through this again uh <laughs> because this is what we made critical mistake last time okay ip target group target type ip if i go back here target group stickiness source ip I think this should be fine, but what is the target type IP? Do I need a instance? Lambda instance target group. Okay, so I don't need to specify anything. Oh, so many of these. Okay. Protocol ALB listener. Let's just check the listener too, because so, so the target group could only be HTTP. The listener, oh no, the listener must be HTTP. Okay, hold on, I mixed that up. The target group could be TCP, but the listener had to be HTTP. Yeah, so, HTTP listener. or HTTPS. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, so undo the HTTP there. The Redo. It should be there. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Hopefully that's it. I don't think we have any. You know, does Terra from also count as a pepcac? No, and I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened in in the Zoom transcript so much that I've started typing it. Oh. As Terra from. I did it on Friday twice, and I was like, oh, Zoom. Um, which is why I also alias Terraform to TF, so I don't have to worry about that. By the way, everybody, I'm doing a Nazi thing, which is Git push force, but this is, I guarantee you, it is just me working on main. It is not, it is not anybody, no one's collaborating on this. Ooh. So oh, okay. I'm just gonna squash the commit. All I right. know. Nazi, Nazi. <laughs> I, I feel like it's what, you know, some, I, don't do force. You wouldn't do force on your team. Just, just putting I it I mean, out it there. depends on how you feel about your team, but you should not do force on your team. Right. Precisely. <laughs> uh... Initializing Terraform configuration. <laughs> I need this voiceover in my life. Can I, I just will... say that? <laughs> I'll record it for you if you want it to. It so it Does anybody you. want that voiceover in their life? Like, <laughs> terraform initializing. <laughs> oh no, terraform cloud. Your run trigger is botched. Please reapply. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could get behind that. <laughs> oh, I miss you, Got Mail, so much. Wait, the guy, like the 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 really nasally sounding guy, that like, you've got Mail, that one. I think that's also why I've probably changed all of my Siri and Google prompts to like UK people, UK men uh, specifically. I haven't bothered changing it because I guess I just. Oh, it's so wonderful. It is okay. AOL. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. AOL. Okay. Yeah. So it was the it was the nasally guy. Yeah. You've got Mel. 
is that one. And I used to use that for everything. I'll see what I'll see what we can get done for your uh your Terraform Cloud uh voiceover effect. Maybe they can add I something in VS. I will do it just for you, and then we can see if we can turn it into an extension <laughs> for VS Code. Oh yeah, that'll work. Uh, I need a voiceover, but uh, there there's a lovely error again. Oh no, incompatible pro. Okay, so maybe you just need to switch the other one to HTTP HTTP also. <sighs> I know, but. I wish they just told me this here. I... Is there not? A, yeah, there is. Absolutely, isn't a note that says if you choose HTTP for here, you have to use it. You can't mix and match your protocols. I know. I that know. would be a good, a good note for that. So sad. Oops. Uh, I'm. I, I think that with the, again, with the target groups and the listeners and everything else, I, you know, I just, I just wanted it all, this is why I think there's just a lot of, I mean, there are a lot of components to AWS that, and I understand to a certain degree, but. <laughs> oh no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> For those of I you mean, not in chat, <laughs> Blurn said, every time Tracy does a voiceover, I feel like I'm in a dystopian future where an AI is whispering Terraform commands to me. And I don't know whether to be scared or honored <laughs> for I the implication. Mean, I am absolutely not Gladys, by the way. I am not Gladys. I was going to uh, say, you know, there there was some Gladys vibes going on. Some <laughs> vibes. I mean, maybe that's partly what, it, what we've... Uh, the, the cloud world, right? That's what I do. Now it's killing me not to say it. I feel so bad. <laughs> oh, it, it just reminds me every time when someone does one of those demos of uh, like Alexa, make me a data center, you know, uh, you know, the, the, it always just like, just throws me off just a little bit. Like, oh, we, we're, we're, I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not there to tell my, you know, my, my little voice, the voice box thingy, I don't know, like home, I don't know what they're branded now. Home devices? Uh, <laughs> oh, your smart device. Alexa, smart make device. me a data center. <laughs> I'm not going to tell my refrigerator to do that. That just seems. No, I I'm drawing the line. No. Oh, look, replaced. And target group attachment also needs to be replaced. I'm trying to imagine, like, she would misunderstand you, though. Like, you would say, Alexa, give me a data center. And she'd be like, I'm sorry, did you mean a better dinner? And you're just like. <laughs> they are very creepy. Especially, I apologized to one the other day and I literally turned off all my mics after that. Why do you apologize? Be, okay, like it was two things. So one, I, I have iOS stuff, but I also use Google and so I was, I say, hey to one and okay to the other, but I mixed the commands. And so I made the mistake and said, see now, is my phone on? Okay. I made a mistake and said, hey Siri or something. And then I meant, okay, Google. And basically the response was, dang it, sorry. No, 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 turn the mic off. Do not, do not respond. Okay. <laughs> see? So what I made the mistake of doing was apologizing because I was like, oh, no, I meant, and they're like, did you forget my name? And I was like, yo, I'm sorry. It's okay. And I was like, wait, wait, you, no, don't tell me it's okay when I, you know what? And so I turned off the mics on everything because it got a little creepy that day. Oh, and now we have the vacuuming in the hall. Okay. Uh, so bad news bears once again. Uh, stickiness will not work here. So... Why? Be uh, because we changed it to an ALB, so we can't do source IP stickiness, which I don't, I mean, I guess it kind of makes a, makes sense because you want to sticky, you want to make it sticky for the IP address, your source IP address, because you don't want to be re-authenticating, right? Okay. You do want some sticky session, but I don't, oh, but it's false anyway. Oh, come on. Then why? 
Default is true. Huh? And it's optional, so let's see. The type. Wait, you already have it false. I know. I'm confused. Wait, why? But the type is required. Type is state possession is the only term possible. But... Okay. Well, it's enabled false, so I'm just going to... And But type is required, so I'm just going to force it to be LB cookie and then... And then uh, false. Yeah. It may be at all. Ugh. Is that a pep cat? I can't see your screen to know if you're typing it in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Five second rule. <laughs> it is a cookie, so that does apply. If you drop an LB cookie on the ground, is it still as tasty? Uh, no. Okay. I don't think so. Because then it would have been distributed to two or three instances, and I just want my whole cookie. That makes perfect sense. I love cookies, everybody. That's basically... You don't mess with me and cookies. You don't. Mm -mm. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> she, she got triggered during Hashi Talks. It was a thing. <laughs> I was I was helping with production support. I don't even remember what I was doing with the cookie. I just really wanted the cookies. It, it was the person that had the really nice voice and the very calming uh, presentation. But oh, cookie yes. kept getting brought up and then in chat the whole time it was, man, I really want a cookie now. And so when we took a break, the first thing she did was go and, like, and get some cookies. Yes, that is true. Yes. All right. Okay. Let's see. Is it happy? But, oh, right. Switch views. Also, again, they're vacuuming the hallway outside. It, can't that, hear it. There's just, oh, you can't hear it? Really? No, the only time I heard something was like a couple of knocks, but otherwise you oh. can't hear the vacuuming. No. Huh. Okay. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. You know what's killing me not to, to say anything? Like What? Because I don't want to be the AI of, of the dystopian future that You should do it anyway. Dreams. I really do. I You know, it would make us very happy, right? Like, <laughs> you can <laughs> scroll up. <laughs> Too late. Plus, you need confirmation anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Blur. Yeah. It's not bad, though. Okay. All right, thanks for checking in with it. Cause I just, I, could, I don't want to ask them to stop vacuuming, but on the other hand, okay. <laughs> They're doing their job, I know. Okay, all right, so finally we got it to apply. Nice. Uh, this is ridiculous. All this okay. to, to make sure that I can't get into something, which I think is hilarious by the way. I mean, I locked it down so no one could get into anything, which also works too. Um, hmm, load balancers, target groups, auto scaling groups, target groups, reload. No, stop, AWS. Okay, there we go. All right, let's see. Total targets, it is checking the health. Uh, we'll see what happens there. There's no point in me trying to access it at this endpoint, basically, until this goes healthy. So, in the meantime, we wait. Nope. It's not happy. Look at un get how unhealthy this is. What it's like, when you say unhealthy, are we talking, like, straight junk food for three days over a gaming session unhealthy? Or are we just talking about all the calories you burned today, you just ate them your weight in like lattes unhealthy i think it's just it basically it's like you forgot to phone someone unhealthy <laughs> oh okay. okay all right all right yes well that's not helpful here i thought i attached the security group i thought you did also that was the whole point of the this, exercise. <laughs> this particular rabbit hole right hold on internet phasing Availability zones, that's fine. Security group, okay. I got the security group. Load balancer. Inbound, that's loud. Outbound. Is it because I don't have outbound rules? I... 
There's only one way to find out. <laughs> I don't know. Do we count that as a pep cack? <laughs> what, you, you not having so. that? I don't think that, yeah, I don't think not having the outbound rules counts as a pep cack. Okay. I think it might not be communicating because it has no outbound rules. Hold on. Uh, egress. I mean, I could get really fancy with it and say, go to the controller load, controller security group. So let's do that. Can I do a uh, egress destination security? Would the default be to deny all? I think so. I think the default is deny all outbound blur it. But I don't want to say, because I think if you, if you're already, if you're doing the allowances, because egress, you have to add the allowances too now. Oh, goodness gracious. Source destination. So I can't do destination. Hmm. What are you looking at? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't have a destination secure. To from. I'll, I'll access to from. Okay. See, why do you call it source security group ID, I guess, when it's to from? Why don't you use the ingress egress block instead? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I prefer, it's just a preference. I like to do the rule rather than doing the, uh, the ex, like the declared explicit um, security group egress ingress. Um, it's, this offers a little bit more flexibility, at least from my personal uh, development standpoint. I just like doing it this way. The other way um, that's, you know, that. Quinn, Quinn, I was, is mentioning is basically declaring this security group with the egress ingress inline, um, and that is that basically overwrites it all. So you declare it as it is, and then it overwrites everything. Uh, I just prefer the rules because then I can just add them selectively. So if I do need to add another one from a plan standpoint, I mean it doesn't change too much, but it's just a for me I like the the look of it when I plan and I see the individual rules. Um, but in, if you have very strict security group rules, um, which in this case I'll probably refactor uh, to use the inline ingress egress because of the strictness of the security groups. But if they're not as strict. <laughs> I couldn't tell if it was like a full on name or like there are bits of things interspersed with the name and like in my head I've been sounding out <laughs> the entire yeah but it is like it is a good thought though because they they do there are like you can terraform offers both ways to declare it um and it just for me i like the, the the way you can extend it with these rules instead especially for testing purposes but i mean they work the same way so it's not so bad uh lb ingress controller controller lb okay Should I commit amend? No, that's probably not. Uh, add egress rule to, let's see. Let's try it. And... Switch the view, switch the view. Oh yes, right, okay. Let me, actually since I'm on this view anyway, we're gonna just run it and then Q plan. Look at how many aired out. You're laughing, I know. <laughs> I'm laughing with you. Initializing yes. Terraform configuration. So it's funny, people ask like, I don't, Tracy, do people ever ask you like, what's the exact way to do these things? And then you always have to, you always hesitate because you're like, eh, it depends, sorry. It depends is my default answer. Actually, that should also be on a t-shirt. <laughs> How do you feel? It depends. Okay. <laughs> depends on what? Exactly. What are you trying to do? Um, and then, yeah. I tell them it usually ends up exactly what we're doing, which is trial and error. Uh -huh. But there's no right answer in the cloud. Or at least as it applies to infrastructure, like there's no right answer. Yeah. Everyone Unless doesn't... it's security, in which case there is like 
there are better things that you should do and things that you probably don't want to do. Want to do? That's true. Okay, I'll take that back. That is true. But I feel like that's like the like some of the things in Tariff Worm, right? The way that the resources are, resources are written, they're super flexible, but that flexibility comes at a cost too, right? And so it's always about whenever you're writing, it's always about weighing the cost of it. If you offer the flexibility for someone to add security group rules, ingress and egress, yeah, you know, there's a, um, there's a, in some ways there's a cost to it because you never really enforce the immutability of that rule right. or of that grouping of rules. And so someone could just add a rule to it and you wouldn't necessarily recognize that that's the additional rule. So either way, six one way, half a dozen another. Okay. We're going to reload this listener. Yeah. Work with Azure at work and network security groups are way easier to work with. They are. Something about the way, I think because maybe AWS came out with the security group system from the beginning and, you know, it, it tended to be kind of convoluted in the first place. So it might be more a legacy concern, the way that it's interacting. Oh dear. Hmm. Well, the target group could just be resetting itself, which is also the case. So we might need to give it a couple minutes, but let's check out the security group. I will remove this thing and this thing. Controller. Outbound. What? What happened? I don't think it caught the out. Oh, I think you need to call it a pepcac. I put, I did, I forgot, I copy pasted it and didn't change ingress to egress. Great job, Rosemary. <laughs> it's one of those days. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I had it all there and I was like, oh yeah, I thought I, I thought I changed it to egress. It was not egress, it was ingress. Uh, we're all. Now we can all watch paint dry again. <laughs> I mean, it's not terribly compelling to watch, you know? <laughs> I mean, look at this. Configuring remote state back in. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Maybe that'll help a little bit. Yeah, the refreshing state. Oh, I didn't do that one, did I? I'll catch it on the next go around. Your egress rule must be replaced. I love the error messages. <laughs> I'll say those all day long. Really? Yes. <laughs> error messages. I get. I. I get so much joy. So. Okay. Well, we probably have to wrap up in a little bit, but let's see if we can get this working at least. Hopefully, I give it the next five minutes ish, and if we can't get it to work, I'm just going to call it a day, and we might pick up next Monday. Again, try it again. We have still yet to lock down database security groups as well, which has been. Also, I am extremely to, I'm going to, I'm not perfect. I'm going to say this right out loud, which is going to be really, really bad. And people should not do this, but I am very tempted to go into the console and just change these manually until they work. I mean, but I'm like, no, we're not like, I know if I do that, I will forget what we've done. I'm not gonna tell. I'm going to tell, I would be sad because you know why? Then I don't remember what I did <laughs> <laughs> at all. I never remember. I legitimately don't remember what I do. So this is literally because I forget what I'm doing and then I have to remember it. Okay, we're good now. This this is there, okay. Uh, and I literally do this process. I literally do the infrastructure as code process because I have zero ability to remember what I've done.
so I have to actually write it all down, legitimately write it all down. Um, will you be healthy, please? Monitoring. I look at that and I always think of mother. Mother, I am cold. You are cold. I am cold. Why do you think this is healthy? I am not. He I am not healthy. I am cold. Okay. So the question is, will this reset? It, the outbound rule is there now. Can I tell it to deregister? Oh no. I just wanted to reset the health check. What was my health check anyway? Doesn't care. Health checks. Interval, 30 seconds, timeout. Five consecutive health check successes. So in order for that basically to happen, 30 times five is 150 seconds, which means we have to wait for about two and a half, two and a half minutes for it to register as successful again. Great. Well, we're coming up at the top of the hour, Tracy. <laughs> Have we learned anything today? <laughs> <laughs> Not anything I probably couldn't say that I could probably say on on, on the stream. No. <laughs> just edit from the console. Yeah, yeah. Just edit from the console. Maybe, maybe that's what we've learned today. You know, just edit it from the console first and go in. Uh, I think it's just out of habit at this point. Five, fives, one consecutive. Oh, good point. Yes, that's true. Oh, it's healthy. Oh, healthy. Can I load balancer? Will it do it today? Come on. Come on. I know you're struggling. There is a listener. There is that. Um, it's healthy. I don't know what else to do, I guess. I mean, we um, can leave it at healthy. Oh no, it went back to unhealthy for some reason. Oh, barfing human. Why is that back to unhealthy? I'm confused. What? It was healthy, and then now, oh no, it registered as healthy. Oh, it's wait, right, yeah, yeah, okay. That is true, yes, We if we do this, maybe we can do that. Is it going to do it? Sorry, I'm hopping around. Will it do it? Uh, no. Hmm. Okay. Did you use the right load balancer? Oh, yes. Wait, you're right. Yes. That, thank you. Thank you. That is correct. It is, I believe you're right. I think it might be a different ID. Yeah. Didn't I ask that earlier? No, nah, yeah, well, I don't know. Honestly, you know what? Count that as a pep cack on my behalf. Oh, shoot. <laughs> um, brain is, oh, yay, thank you. All right, I'm gonna put this in Twitch because, you know, how confident are we? Can anybody access that? <laughs> Here we go. You have to and include the port. You have to yeah. copy and copy the port because the port needs to be there. So, All right. Here uh, unfortunately, we go. Twitch just linked it. And then... It's trying. Come on. I got in. Oh, well. I didn't. It's still loading for me, so I think it's actually going to keep me out. How did you get in? Well, it might be the same uh, provider. Who knows? Or same uh, provider or something. Uh, you... okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't scare me. So <laughs> we went through this process. It was so painstaking. <laughs> Kill Oh, this is great. great. I love this. <laughs> you guys are the best. Everybody here, everybody on here is the best. These folks are amazing. Oh, that was okay. fun. That was really fun. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to call this, uh, call this successful for, for this part, at least we might go back and uh, fix the database security groups, but I appreciate everybody's help uh, in debugging and directing me into the right places. Uh, this was, I, I love this. Um, Thank you all for testing this endpoint as well and nearly giving me a, a mild, uh, some mild shock <laughs> after we worked so hard to lock down these security groups. 
Um, anyway, I think our next stream. When is our next stream? I Wednesday. Think Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday. Terraforming with Freeman is on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, tune in again. And thanks so much for everybody who's joined us. We appreciate all the help. Um, and we'll hopefully see you Wednesday or next week. All right. Have a great week. Thanks.